Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 297. Science, the angel with the flaming sword, God's gift, the glory of the risen Lord, light of the world, in whose light we shall see God and perfect Son, blessed unity. Hymn number 297. The scriptural will be given by Lydia from Georgia. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious, hallowed be thy name, adorable one, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, Truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 60. Fight the good fight with all thy might. 
Christ is thy strength, and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life, and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally. Hymn number 60. Welcome to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed the roundtable this morning, please catch it on our website. Also on Sundays at 11 o'clock, we have a Sunday school for children. And that class is conducted via teleconference number that can be accessed from anywhere in the world. So if you have a child of Sunday school age and don't live in the area, please call us and your child will be more welcome. Every Wednesday evening we have a testimony meeting at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And at every service, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. And you can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com, our channel on YouTube, and you can find us on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to our services not only here in person, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com, on our channel on YouTube, or on your telephone via a teleconference number that we provide. I'd like to point out uh, a good article featured on our cover page of our website, Timely, entitled, Leaving the Past by Louise Knight Wheatley. Short and sweet. And let's see, there was some question as to whether we would have a Bible study session next Saturday. Has anybody signed up? Yes, someone has signed up. So we will have a Bible study session next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. So please check the website for the study questions, 
and join us next Saturday at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. Now we will have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Amanda from Missouri. Page 658, a testimony from Ireland. It is with a heart full of love and gratitude to God and to our dear leader that I send this testimony to the field. I had never been a strong girl, had always been subject to colds and chills, and suffered all my life from a delicate throat. Seven years ago, I had a very severe attack of rheumatic fever and subsequently two less severe ones. These left all sorts of evils behind them, debility, chronic constipation, and several others, so that with these ills, my life was often a burden to me, and I used to think I should never receive relief or health. I had also lost all love for God and faith in Him. I could not accept a God who, as I then believed, visited sickness and sorrow upon His children as a means for drawing them to Him. I was in this state of mind and body when Christian science found me. A dear friend, seeing my suffering, presented the truth to me, and though at first I did not believe that there could be healing for me, the Christian scientist's God seemed to be the one I had been looking for all my life. I began to read Science and Health, and shall never forget my joy at finding that I could love and trust God. I took to studying the Bible and read nothing but Science and Health and other Christian science literature for a year. After studying the little book for about six weeks, I one day realized that I was a well woman, that I had taken no medicine for three weeks, and that my body was perfectly harmonious. The reading of Science and Health healed me. The wonderful joy and spiritual uplifting which came to me then, no words of mine can describe. I had also suffered from astigmatism and had for several years been obliged to use special glasses when reading or working and could never use my eyes for more than half an hour. But from the first reading of Science and Health, I found that I could read in any light for any length of time without the slightest discomfort. I am not only grateful for the physical healing, but for the mental regeneration. I rejoiced that I am now able to help others who are sick and sorrowing. E.E.L. Kerr Camp, County Kildare, Ireland. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 30 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. <clears throat> Subject, Christian Science. The golden text is from Psalms. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. The responsive reading is also from Psalms. <clears throat> Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Which is made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. 
Preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. I will read from the Bible, Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy, youth, thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Second Kings. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Mark. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Matthew. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, As ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. John. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. 
And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go, and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. Elizabeth from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. From beginning to end, the Scriptures are full of accounts of the triumph of spirit mind over matter. Moses proved the power of mind by what men called miracles. So did Joshua, Elijah, and Elisha. The decisions by vote of church councils as to what should and should not be considered holy writ, the manifest mistakes in the ancient versions, the 30,000 different readings in the Old Testament, and the 300,000 in the New. These facts show how a mortal and material sense stole into the divine record, with its own hue darkening to some extent the inspired pages. But mistakes could neither wholly obscure the divine science of the scriptures seen from Genesis to Revelation, mar the demonstration of Jesus, nor annul the healing by the prophets who foresaw that the stone which the builders rejected would become the head of the corner. Jesus established his church and maintained his mission on a spiritual foundation of Christ's healing. He taught his followers that his religion had a divine principle which would cast out error and heal both the sick and the sinning. He claimed no intelligence, action, nor life separate from God. Despite the persecution this brought upon him, he used his divine power to save men both bodily and spiritually. Our Master healed the sick practiced Christian healing, and taught the generalities of its divine principle to his students. But he left no definite rule for demonstrating this principle of healing and preventing disease. This rule remained to be discovered in Christian science. A pure affection takes form in goodness but science alone reveals the divine principle of goodness and demonstrates its rules. In the year 1866, I discovered the Christ science or divine laws of life, truth, and love and named my discovery Christian science. For three years after my discovery, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing, searched the scriptures and read little else, kept aloof from society, and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. I knew the principle of all harmonious mind action to be God and that cures were produced in primitive Christian healing by holy, uplifting faith. 
but I must know the science of this healing. And I won my way to absolute conclusions through divine revelation, reason, and demonstration. St. John writes in the 10th chapter of his book of Revelation, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. This angel had in his hand a little book, open for all to read and understand. Did this same book contain the revelation of divine science, the right foot or dominant power of which was upon the sea, upon elementary latent error, the source of all error's visible forms, the angel's left foot was upon the earth. That is, a secondary power was exercised upon visible error and audible sin. The still small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound. The inaudible voice of truth is to the human mind as when a lion roareth. It is heard in the desert and in dark places of fear. It arouses the seven thunders of evil and stirs their latent forces to utter the full diapason of secret tones. Then is the power of truth demonstrated, made manifest in the destruction of error. Then will a voice from harmony cry, Go and take the little book. Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Mortals, obey the heavenly evangel. Take divine science. Read this book from beginning to end. Study it. Ponder it. It will be indeed sweet at its first taste when it heals you. But murmur not over truth if you find its digestion bitter. Today, the healing power of truth is widely demonstrated as an imminent eternal science instead of a phenomenal exhibition. Its appearing is the coming anew of the gospel of on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This coming, as was promised by the Master, is for its establishment as a permanent dispensation among men. But the mission of Christian science now, as in the time of its earlier demonstration, is not primarily one of physical healing. Now as then, signs and wonders are wrought in the metaphysical healing of physical disease. But these signs are only to demonstrate its divine origin, to attest the reality of the higher mission of the Christ power to take away the sins of the world. Truth's immortal idea is sweeping down the centuries, gathering beneath its wings the sick and sinning. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself. 
when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The promises will be fulfilled. The time for the reappearing of the divine healing is throughout all time. And whosoever layeth his earthly all on the altar of divine science drinketh of Christ's cup now and is endued with the spirit and power of Christian healing. In the words of St. John, he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. This comforter I understand to be divine science. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 57. Father, to thee we turn away from sorrow. Thou art the fountain whence our healing flows. Dark though the night, joy cometh with the morrow. Safely they rest who on thy love repose. Hymn number 57.
voice is speaking can you hear it or are you seeking safety in a dream looking for the world to steam and finding Still small voice is calling, leave behind your nets. For each material thing that you acquire comes with earthquake, wind, and fire. It's destiny. Something you can force Prepare your heart In meekness and Let spirit take your course The still small voice Is speaking We can feel it So even when the thunder Drowns the world Let's now sing hymn number 74. Go forth and stand upon the mount, for truth is at thy side. The very rocks may seem to break and earth to open wide, yet error's tempest and its fire before that still small voice retire. Hymn number 74.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen.